Golding all of the license tests in Gran Turismo 4 can be pretty difficult. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you how to gold all of the A license tests in this game. And if one of these tests helped you, be sure to like and subscribe, and let me know down in the comments which one I was able to help you with. Now let's get right into it. For license A1, get to the left side of the track before the end of the bridge, and turn in at the start of the striped curve. Brake just after making contact with the inside lane, slowing down just enough to hit a late apex when powering out. Keep to the right until you pass the gantry and slowly make your way inside, blending between the brake and the throttle to hit a late apex, powering out as straight as possible. Then just drive straight through the tunnel and you're done. In A2, we'll basically mimic what we did in A1, but now we need to be more careful about oversteer. You can do this by being more gentle with your brake and throttle application to avoid spinning out. Just focus on maintaining a clean line while maximizing your grip in the rear tires. A little bit of slip is alright, but if you have to counter steer to maintain your line, you've gone too far. Pass through the tunnel and you're all set. Cut the first turn of A3 and get to the outside heading into the last turn. Turn in at the start of the curb, braking in the middle of the track, and release to power out as wide as possible. For A4, you'll want to take the straightest possible line getting to the outside of the track before 130R. Brake and turn at the 50 board, but don't slam it, it's not necessary. Power out to dip your tires onto the outside curb and maintain an outside line to finish the test. To start A5, stick behind the pace car heading into the hairpin. Get on the curb and watch for the 50 board. Brake and turn once past it, aiming for a double apex line. And when exiting, try to keep the pace car in the center of your screen. Now stay behind the pace car heading into this windy hill section. Don't be afraid to dip your tires into the grass before turning in and braking to hug this inside turn. But watch out for the blind cones up ahead. Now here, you'll turn in and brake in the middle of the track and power out to be parallel with the track between turns. Ease your way through and out of this turn to then brake for the inside of the hairpin. Hug it till you're halfway and power out to be on the outside afterwards. Get behind the pace car until before the tunnel exit and braking at the last arrow sign above while also maintaining as much speed as possible through the bend. Set up on the outside before the next turn and brake just before these pair of shadows. Aim to exit as wide as possible, hitting the outside curb, and powering through behind the pace car to finish this test. The Mercedes in A6 suffers a lot from understeer, so watch out for this. Turn in after the shadow and brake just shortly after, aiming to hug the inside of the turn until the track straightens out. Then turn into the next corner, aiming to hit the curb as late as possible before straightening out to the outside curb. Now, swing back to the right side to set up for this final turn, breaking at the darkest patch of the tread line, and making sure to wait halfway through the turn before getting back on the power. Then you'll aim for the outside and head straight down until you finish the test. For A7, you'll start off wide right before swinging back inside, and make sure to lift to ensure you don't end up off track. Now keep to the right before breaking at this white graffiti. Gently approach the apex and exit much wider than usual, basically getting your wheels on the grass. Turn as little as possible to stay on track and finish the test. For A8, you'll actually stick to the middle of the track with the throttle pinned, using your upshift to give you the rotation and hit the apex to finish out this first section. Then you'll stick to the right with all the gravel, before cutting as much of the track as you can, getting on the grass to finish this test. A9 is another test with a lot of understeer. Turn in after making contact with the tread line and abuse the track limits as much as possible. Key to the inside until you're halfway between the two turns. Slow down just a little bit and turn back inside. Now maintain your momentum before gently pumping the brakes and turning back in, powering out with as much speed as possible and using all of the track width to finish the test. The Acura also suffers from the same understeer issues like in the last test, so just be cautious when entering corners. Get behind the pace car as early as possible entering the first turn, 
aim to hit the apex of turn 1 before comfortably powering out to hit this part of the track. Once there, get on the brakes and aim for the apex. Get back on the throttle as early as possible to power through the turn. Now head for the S's behind the pace car. For this section, it's a bit difficult to have a reference for every turn, but a good general note is to try to minimize your brake usage, even trail braking into turns, while aiming for a late apex and hugging the inside as much as possible before repeating the process for the next turn. But you'll want to maintain this technique for the first four turns of the S's before just aiming straight for the apex and powering out as wide as possible heading into the Dunlop curve. After passing the outside curb, get back behind the pace car, staying just to the right of it to maintain a consistent slipstream while heading into the Degner curve. Now look to the left for the brake boards and brake at the 50 board while turning in. Power out to keep your wheels on the curb before braking at the end of it. Aim to get back on the throttle at the apex and keep the power down while heading to the hairpin. Aim for the apex before braking at this shadow. Slow down as much as you can before swinging the car around and straightening the car back out to follow the pace car into the upcoming long right-hander. Throughout it, you want to try to stay as far left as possible to the pace car and listen to the wind noise to make sure you're still in its slipstream. The less you hear, the faster you'll be going. Now look to your right for this trail. Brake after crossing it and try to claim as much of the inside as possible, giving the pace car a few love taps while you're at it. Exit as wide as you can before gently entering the final section of spoon and powering out to hit the curb on the outside. Now you'll just follow the pace car down the back stretch, heading into 130R. After passing the 50 board, slam on the brakes and exit as wide and long as you can to keep up your momentum. Get back over to the left and watch for the pace car. Brake as soon as you see his taillights and try to prepare to enter the chicane. I don't do a great job, but I do manage to hit my apexes and power out as early as I can when leaving the chicane. Keep your exit wide and stay just to the left of the pace car as you head down the last curve and finish the test. In A11, start off wide and reach this part of the track. Once there, swing hard right and keep the accelerator pinned. Aim to hit the barrier with the back end of your car before powering out and finishing the test. A13 is going to look really weird, but trust me on this. Brake and turn after this shadow passes off screen. Be sure to swing into the turn to be basically perpendicular while you hold the accelerator. And on exit, just point the car where you want to end up and you'll be there. Now just repeat this process two more times with each corner getting narrower and narrower as you traverse up the hill. Brake and turn to swing the car to be perpendicular with the barrier while holding the accelerator until you have to exit where you'll point the car to where you want to end up. Except for this last turn. Just swing in early and power out to the finish line. In A13, you'll need to nail two sections just to even come close to golding this test. Start off wide before turning in to hit a late apex inside the tunnel, and keep to the left to set up for the first important section. Get onto the curb and brake halfway through the straightest part before turning in. Power out to exit as wide as possible before getting in the middle of the track to set up for the bend. Aim to hit the apex of the first half before braking and turning to hit the second and you can keep a pretty high speed given the radius of this turn. Now this next section will be even more important than the last. Get back to the right before entering the tunnel. Now turn in just before you enter and break about a half second after. Try to stay as close to the inside as possible as the exit of this turn will determine how fast you finish the test. Look at your timer at the end of the tunnel and if it's not below 40.8 seconds, just restart. But if it is, then you can go up the hill and finish the test. For A14, start off wide and aim for both apexes of the S-Bend before powering out to the gray curve. Break before the end of these shadows and aim to hit the second apex of this turn. Power out so you don't exit too wide and end up off track and stick to the left. Hug this edge as much as possible until you can turn in to cut as much of the next turn as possible. And break at the start of the curb as you're going over it and aim to hit the inside of the hairpin. Go for a double apex approach and power out as much as possible on your exit. Now you can run it all the way down until you pass the finish line. In A15, get behind the base car as early as possible 
to draft him before entering the first section. And for this section, you'll want to maintain your momentum as much as possible, so cut turn 1 and turn 2 as much as you can. Don't worry about staying in the slipstream, as it's not nearly as important as having a good line throughout the turns. And don't be afraid to lift through this last turn to maintain stability. Follow the pace car into the tunnel, and brake just before this shadow. Power out as early as you can while hitting a late apex and sticking to the left side of the track after leaving the tunnel. Brake and turn at the end of the straight curb to get as much rotation as possible through the corner. Exit wide, and get back to following the pace car. When entering the S-Bend, aim for the first apex before turning in and slowing down to hit the next one. You'll want to power out for as long as you can without having to lift and still ending on the right side before the tunnel. Turn in at the entrance and aim to hit this part of the corner. Put the power down as early as you can and keep with the pace car through the tunnel and the forest. Break at the end of the dark shadow and try to power out halfway through the turn. Stick with the pace car heading up the hill before taking as much of the inside as you can through the windier section. After passing the crest, Aim for the inside and brake before the dark shadow. Exit wide and cut back right before heading downhill. Keep to the right before the track levels out, turning in once you've passed it and braking shortly after. Really try to exit as wide as you can, heading down into the old school trial mountain chicane. Just stay behind the pace car before turning in at the end of the Nissan wall and gently braking to maintain the line. Keep up your speed while following the pace car and finishing the test. In A16, set up wide for the first turn before taking it flat out. Get to the right before the next. Break and turn at the start of this curb while maintaining as much momentum as possible through this bend. Get on the left curb before turning in at the end of this shadow. Break shortly afterwards and try to power out halfway through the turn. Now stick to the left before this next windy section. We'll be maintaining high speeds, so stay confident. Lift and turn after this graffiti to try to get as much rotation into the corner. Keep on the accelerator until you meet the end of the curb and hit the brakes. Double apex this section and then cut the right hander to exit as wide as possible down the straight. Now keep to the left and brake at this thicker shadow. Keep it smooth before exiting wide and turning back to the right afterwards. Brake after this break in the shadows and try to let the car sweep itself through the turn by keeping the power on and not letting the car swing out too wide. Get back to the left before braking at the end of this curb, swinging right back inside, straightening out, and then finishing the test. And now, you have all 16 license tests golded for the A license. Now you can take your overpowered pace car into the Sunday Cup, which is a lot more useful than the accurate DNX you get for getting all silvers. 